The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. There's a man by the name of Yitzchak Nemes, who lives in Crown Heights in Brooklyn. He was a dealer in rear postage stamps by profession. And he would often go to stamp shows where he would display his collection. There was a fellow stamp dealer at these shows, an elderly Jewish gentleman. His name was Robert Trankel. Their booths were often right next to each other, so they became friends, each one selling their goods, their rear stamps. And during these conversations that they would have, they would often discuss Jewish topics. And Yitzchak would try to open up Robert's heart and mind towards Yiddishkeit, towards more Jewish observance. One day in the early 1980s, Mr. Trankel traveled with his wife to Brussels, Belgium. There was a big stamp show there. He's in Brussels. Sadly and tragically, they were in a car accident, and his wife, Mrs. Trankel, lost her life. Robert returned home to Riverdale, New York, a broken man, and he fell into a depression over the loss of his wife. In the weeks that follow, this friend, Yitzchak Nemes, would visit him often and try to lift his spirits. You got to go back to work. You got to rebuild your life. You can't stay like this. And over time, the two became very, very close. During one of his visits, Yitzchak put forth this idea. He said, Robert, when your wife was alive, she prepared your meals for you, and you ate whatever she served. But now that you have to do your own cooking, perhaps it's going to be a good time for you to think about starting to keep kosher. In the merit of the soul of your wife, kosher your kitchen and start keeping kosher. At first, Robert seemed a little bit interested, and then he said, nah, nah, it's going to be too difficult for me. Life is too difficult as it is. I don't need to take on anything new. So Yitzchak said to him, what if I would personally deliver kosher meals for the week, every week? If I brought you kosher dinners, it's hard for you to cook anyway, and this way, your meals will be prepared, and will be kosher. He says, that could work, but I don't want to bother you. You live in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Yeah, schlep out here every week. He said, it would be my honor. It would be my privilege. Please, let me do it. And he said, okay. A few days later, Yitzchak sends over a friend to kosher Mr. Trankel's kitchen. Now that he's going to be keeping kosher, they kosher the kitchen. And that Thursday evening, Yitzchak took the subway to a place called Schreiber's. At that time, it was the main kosher frozen food company in New York. And he orders seven kosher meals. He places the order that every Thursday there should be waiting for him seven kosher meals. He takes the prepackaged dinners, and he makes his way to his friend Trankel's house. Robert opens the door, and he's shocked to see his friend is really there with shopping bags filled with seven kosher dinners. Amazing. He doesn't think this is going to continue like every week. But to Nemes, this was important. The following Thursday night, Yitzchak Nemes is there again, seven prepackaged dinners. He continued this practice, not for weeks, not for months, but for years. Arriving back home in Crown Heights at 11 p.m. Thursday night, because he needed to do his mitzvah of bringing one mitzvah to one Jew. Every so often, Robert would protest and say, Yitzchak, I know how difficult this is to you coming here every week. Maybe you want to stop. And Yitzchak said, you have no idea what this does for me for the whole week. I feel so good. The truth is that it did cost him quite a bit of time. It was a big sacrifice to give up every Thursday evening, literally for years. And the expense as well. He wouldn't take any money from his friends, so he would be paying for this. But for the opportunity to bring a mitzvah to a fellow Jew, for him, it was the greatest feeling in the world. Let's fast forward. Years have passed. Robert Trankel had passed away. Let's go fast forward. There's a knock on the door at the Nemes residence. Mrs. Zelda Nemes, his wife, Yitzchak's wife, opens the door and sees a college kid there. Hello, my name is Steve Trankel. I'm a student at the University of Pennsylvania. I came here because I wanted to meet the family that fed my grandfather's dog for all those years. And Zelda wasn't sure that she heard correctly what he said. You mean your grandfather for all those years? No, 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 no. My grandfather's dog. Weren't you the one that sent those kosher food packages to Robert Trankel every week? Just yet, yet that was my husband. My husband did that. I'm the grandson of Robert Trankel. 
Those kosher dinners were way too salty for him. But Grandpa didn't want to make you guys feel bad. So every week after your husband dropped off the food, he would take the meal and feed it to his dog. And his dog loved them. Now imagine you're Zelda. She's trying to keep a polite smile on her face. But she begins thinking to all the Thursday nights that her husband took a subway, that went to Schreiber's, that paid for seven meals, then schlepped to Riverdale. And in New York weather, in the winter, it could be quite cold. In the summer, it can be quite hot. After a full day's work, never home on a Thursday because he's bringing kosher food to Robert Trunkel. It's his mitzvah. All the evenings that he gave up to benefit another Jew for what? To feed a dog kosher food? Does your dog keep Shabbos too? Mrs. Nemes is playing all this out in her head. And then the young man continues. You know, to think that someone would go through all of that for another person, I've always found it unbelievable. It's always been on my mind. Who are these people? Why would they do this? I was so impressed by the dedication to your beliefs that I came here to learn more about who you are, what you represent, who I am, and whom I ought to be. From that point, Steve Trankel became a regular visitor to Crown Heights and to the Nemes home. And to make a long story short, the kosher food that Yitzhak Nemes so lovingly schlepped to Riverdale maybe did not make it to Robert Trankel's mouth, but it paved the way for his grandson's journey to his heritage and to his roots. And today, Steve, who goes by Shimon, Shimon Trankel lives a fully Torah-observant life in Israel. He and his wife are raising an entire generation of engaged Jews, all thanks to the food that was fed to his grandfather's dog. The point, my friends, is that no mitzvah ever goes to waste. Even if it didn't accomplish what you had hoped, what you had expected, even if the whole exercise seemed pointless or meaningless at the time, Every act of goodness performed since the beginning of time remains embedded within the world and continues to work its magic and shine its light across the divides in space. It never goes away. It has forever changed the world. Don't underestimate the infinite value of a single mitzvah performed by a single Jew. Don't think one doesn't matter. One Jew, one mitzvah changes the world. And so when you help facilitate the Jewish observance of one mitzvah for one Jew, you cannot begin to know the long-term impact that you'll have not only on this person's life, but on the entire world. Because all small acts the Rebbe taught us has cosmic implications. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to Inspire.org.